Yeah, we are here at the banks. We decided to get up early, unlike uh, Ray and Jace. Uh, we decided to sleep in, like lazy butts. But yeah, uh, so we decided to, to come to the banks, um, mainly targeting diamonds and, and, and try to get a sandy. Uh, the water is a little bit warm, uh, but we're going to try and get a fish. Um, yeah, so today we have Larry, who's, uh, who's come onto the show with us. Larry, welcome to, uh, to the show. Um, firstly, um, congrats to you on your, on your baby girl. Um, Thank you. Yeah, so today we're going to try and get Larry onto a, a big diamond and stuff like that. So it's, it's always been an ambition of his. And um, yeah, let's, let's see if we can make that uh, reality today. Okay, viewers. Um, so basically, what I've decided to go on here is I'm a big fan of fishing um, with full metal jackets. Um, so what I've put on here is uh, the big old trusty 10 hour mustard circle. Uh, the tuna circle. Uh, it's been my, my all round hook for the whole of the summer season and it hasn't failed me. So it's a seriously, seriously good hook. Uh, onto that, I've got uh, some Surflon 135 pound uh, blood wire. And that's onto a stopper, which I've made with, with, with one more. And I've used a uh, raised technique of the UV knot sense to stick that up. I'm sure you'll be very happy about that. Um, and then just very basic. Two little beads uh, in between and the, the anti swivel. Uh, it just helps with the, with the, a little bit of anti kinking, I would say. Um, and yeah, so it just uh, that your your wire lasts uh, a little bit longer. And yeah, and that, to that, uh, there doesn't look like there's much of a, a ground swell. So um, I'm gonna use a cone sinker today. Uh, also because we we are targeting diamonds, and uh, generally with a grapnel sinker you. If they do sit on that, uh, the, those spikes, they uh, they tend to get a little bit spooked. So uh, the, the, the cone sinker actually uh, prevents that. So yeah, and then what I've done with that is my dingle dangles are very simple. Whatever old traces that I have and that I'm cutting up, um, I make all my dingle dangles from that. So it saves you a bit of money in the long course, in the in the longer version. The bait I'm going to go with today is a juicy frigate from um, Adcan Marine. These are actually really, really fresh. So I actually can't wait to get this thing into the water because anything is going to make a serious breakfast out of it. Um, yeah, so just measuring the dingle. I get one there. You can already see that blood starting to ooze out there. Because there's a little bit of color in the water as well, I'm gonna make my bait quite a messy one, uh, quite a smelly one, um, just so that you can attract a lot of fish from from a wider kind of range. Take those gill plates off. It's always good to have a nice sharp knife as well. Standard bait needle. Um, yeah. through the mouth along the spine it should come out where I want it to here we go and just hook that onto you there should work out perfect hundred percent and then I generally like putting my hook in first um, other guys differ a little bit they like to make the whole bait first and then put the hook in I just find it a little bit easier and then I need to find my cotton. Start by securing that onto the onto my dingo. I think a lot of fishermen don't like when as you're tying your bait and your cotton cuts. <laughs> Not the, the greatest of feelings but uh, yeah, you get over it. <laughs> That viewers is a serious bait just on its own. But because I want a little bit more smell, I'm gonna go for a few cutlets. Just two. You wanna make these cutlets at least about half to a centimeter thick. 
and then you just use the warmth from your hand to mold the mold the cutlet onto your bait so you get that streamlined formation kind of thing. This bait's looking so good, I think I'm gonna take a bite of it. And generally that's probably my best bait for the diamond. Put that away in case we need to use it later. One thing to remember with the circle hook though is um, when you put your hook through the lips, make sure that you're not putting it through uh, too deep. Just make sure that that whole gape is visible because what happens is the diamond comes over and, and eats the whole thing and as it turns, that hook turns right into the corner. Um, so yeah, what happens sometimes is some guys forget and they put their hook too deep and and the whole gap of that hook gets lost and then as it as it goes down as it goes down you think you're going to get hooked up and it goes and then pulls out so yeah that's just one thing to to remember obviously with a circle look you know you can't strike so allow that fish to pull you pull you pull you as it goes down i generally my preference is on a on a relatively tight drag it as it goes down it just pulls three winds off off my drag and then you just lean back and you'll know it's probably hooked then because you'll wake up. And I'm so excited today because uh, over the past week after my cricket game I actually rushed back so I can pop by Kingfisher and get my new rod. Um, my new rod being the new Daiwa tournament. Um, and that matched with my Saltiga dogfight 8000. And on, on top of that I've got 40 pound J braid. Uh, that's been the order of the season, eh? That that, that J braid's been uh, a real, real tough um, competitor for this fish. So yeah, let's go and try and bless it and put it to the test. Uh, we got hijacked, my bag actually got hijacked by uh, Mr. Ray Thompson who joined us on the beach. He just came and abused me on the beach because he saw a better bank than what I was on. So uh, yeah, we moved a little bit up the beach um, to a much better bank, uh, thanks to Ray. Uh, so yeah, first throw in and uh, hopefully we get a bite. been standing here for about five minutes and he's just gone away now with a lovely fish. Other brown skate or a little sand shark, I don't think it was a diamond, but you'll soon see it's coming very easily. But I personally think it's a baby sand shark, so let's have a look what happens. Well, my mate was on with a the fish there, Brunellin had a form. And the fish dropped the bait, so he's just going to quickly go and change, put another bait on, yeah? Whoa! Yeah. And have a look here quickly, guys. Typical sand shot, it squashed the head completely. Okay guys, this is a lovely Umtanzini male sand shark. And the way we know it's a male, it's got these big clusters on the side. They're always stronger than the female. He's very, very dark in complexion to match in with the water that we have here at Umtanzini at the moment. Lovely, watch it. And look at this. See how perfectly that circle look got him. Absolutely perfectly 
around that jaw of his. Lovely circle look. I don't think he was in the water more than a minute. Um, he waded out a lot further. Got a good cast in. And I think it was literally a minute and he was on again. He's using a frigate as bait. Circle look, which is working well for him. And it definitely looks like a nicer sand shark this. Come on, your, your cousin's making you look stupid here. Yeah. a serious idea. Yeah. <laughs> it's all in the bait. What's happening is where Brunellen was the first time, the water was green, it wasn't off colour. We found a bit of dirtier water and an easier wading bank. The water is starting to clean up now, so all those fish are moving down with that clean water this way. Very important, find the dirty water or the discoloured water and you'll find the fish. It's definitely coming this way a lot more. And the sand shark is just on the back line now. <laughs> Brilliant, brilliant fish. Uh, what was it, Larry? Uh, Hanico. And uh, uh, Larry, what was your experience fighting uh, a big sandy if your first? Yeah, so, hi viewers. Amazing, amazing feeling, amazing places. Um, you know, you get to the beach in the morning, you don't know what to expect. Um, but it, as I said, I mean, I, I can't, there's no words to explain. Uh, 
a awesome awesome fishing experience for thanks to the Daiwa ambassadors team for letting me tag along and uh, yeah amazing yeah 100 percent and and the good thing was you got to, you got to to kill a few of your your pbs um, so yeah it's a real real positive and it's it's a way of, of getting more anglers uh, educated about uh, the different species and how we can uh, take care of them as well as catch them and enjoy them thanks guys and we are out from the banks